in a world where Microsoft virtualization is still considered to be the underdog by some. The Hyper-V Amigos enlighten the IT crowds on how they could very well be mistaken. Recording is running now. Hello, my friend Didier. Where hey. are you? I'm, I'm here. Happy New Year. Happy New 2019. Oh. Actually, same to you. Happy New Year, of course. <laughs> We weren't so busy, or we were very busy last year, so we can't do too much Hyper-V Amigo showcasts. It's uh, so incredible. Yeah, and I would say uh, the plans are there to do some this year, right? Yeah, yeah, instead of retiring, we're actually <laughs> going to do more Hyper-V Amigo shows. <laughs> yes. like, I don't know what's happening, but... What do you mean with retiring? <laughs> I have to I have to work at least for 13 years, th 13 more years, <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> Me, me, even longer. Yeah, yeah, you are so young. But but, but I was like, if we if we retire, we have more time to do hyper in your show. <laughs> That's true. So um, actually, this we will start the year with a um, with a hyper Amigo showcase uh, that is also involving some other community program we both are in. You maybe see it on our shirts, right? You know what, what I mean? mean? The the, the, mean, the green thing, thing there. The old logo. Oh, the, it's a shield. It's a shield, yeah. It's, uh, it's a protection, right? The, protection. Yeah. We both are Veeam vanguards. Absolutely. Would you proud? Uh, pride, vanguards. proud ones. Yeah. So, would you like to enlighten the people what a vanguard is? A Veeam vanguard? Well, everybody fills that in for himself, but there are some, let's say, some uh, general traits of a Veeam Vanguard. Yeah. Of course, you're always at the forefront of what's happening with Veeam technologies because yeah. a Vanguard is always at the front of the fight, right? Yeah. Uh, but there are people who work with the product in, uh, in real life, in production, and we share our feedback with Veeam and with the community so people can benefit from our mistakes, our yeah. misconceptions. So basically by being very honest and open that we don't understand everything, people learn something actually. Veeam also learns something that <laughs> apparently they need to explain it better to us uh, and uh, make sure we understand how the product works and how to, to be as successful as possible. Yeah. And I think it's... Uh, it's a great program. I love to be in it. I love the feedback. Uh, and it's a tribute to the quality of Veeam software that I'm able to create such great backup solutions, performant backup <laughs> solutions, high available backup <laughs> solutions. That's, I mean, I just like it. Now you're doing marketing, my friend. We are technicians, you know. So uh, Didier and I, <laughs> we came together last year. Maybe some of you have seen the tweets where we were sitting in my lab. Uh, doing a lot of great stuff and now we want to talk about uh, some of those stuff for Veeam and of course we are backing up Hyper-V, not VMware. I don't know VMware at all but we know Hyper-V a lot and we use that for, we, we use Veeam in our environment and uh, Didier at uh, your workplace you also use Veeam as a backup solution and we quite like it. So um, what, were we, what are we here to talk about today? So um, we're going to focus on update four that yeah. has been uh, released just recently. Yeah. Actually, it went GA, general available, uh, on the 22nd of uh, January, 2019. Yeah. It was RTM about three weeks before that, but that mm -hmm. was not the GA. So they announced GA during uh, the, the event in Florida, I think it was, uh, Velocity. Yeah. That was a partner event. Uh, and they had some uh, very interesting things to share. And one of the most interesting sh things I saw or heard, let's put it that way, is that they have uh, a good focus on technology at the moment. Uh, <laughs> not not, mar not marketing, not, uh, not fluff, let's put it that way, but really like, okay, what do we need to move ahead with the future, with what, what, what everything that's happening around us, on-premises, hybrid, public cloud, private cloud, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever cloud, there's fog computing, there's edge computing. So Veeam is really aiming to be the forerunner when it comes to data management and protection and uh, mobility as well uh, in all those environments. 
which okay. I think is, is an ambitious plan because it, it's going to be quite a challenge. It's, it's very hard to keep up with what's happening, let alone find solutions to deal with all that. Okay, so Didier, I, I am sure we have a lot of more time to talk because one thing we want to do is a live upgrade of a Veeam backup and replication infrastructure to update four, right? And uh, this will take a bit, so let's postpone a little bit our uh, talking our about the new features and what's going on and start up the, the upgrade maybe, and then we have some yeah. time, right? Yeah, let's start clicking, right? So, uh, have you look at the screen here? Um, this is in uh, um, uh, Veeam and back, Backup and Replication Server uh, in our Power Course environment, and uh, Didier is taking the mouse, so I can do this now. That's fantastic with all the all the all the things going on. So we have, uh, I think, update three is installed. Oh? Yeah, not three A, but three A, it seems. Yeah. Uh, but it's nine point five already. Uh, yeah. We have a valid license, as you can see. It's still valid for 62 days, so that's yes. good. So maybe the first pointer is, if you have a running license with, with, with valid support, you can upgrade. You don't have to touch it. The only thing we would advise you, download your new updated license before you do it, then you have it in case you need it. But normally, this license will keep on functioning. Okay. So no worries there. I know there's been some commotion about the new licensing and some confusion with people. Uh, as Gustav would put it, apparently those people did not read the README notes. Uh, some people don't do that. Well, I'm guilty of that sometimes as well, so yeah. I won't judge you. But it's a it's a hint. Uh, Veeam support is there to help you if you run into issues, but just read the README notes, download the new file in case you need it. But as, as long as your license is valid right now, you can update it. will all keep working. No okay. worries there. Okay. So we've checked what we have. So basically all we have to do is close this after we've made sure that there are no jobs running. So... Uh... As I learned, uh, a good thing is to stop all the jobs, right? Or at least disable them. So I dis I, normally, I disable them because even when, when you don't think there is anything running, a copy job might be running, uh, might be active. So what I do normally, I also don't want anything to happen uh, right at that moment when I click install and then a new job kicks off somehow. So I, I just preemptively so disable let's, them. So let's do that. So just okay. click our jobs here. Are you going to do it or am I going to do it? You can do it. You have the mouse. Okay. I'm just enjoying watching you. Oh. I'm going to tell my girlfriend. So there is nothing to so, disable. Uh, Why is that? They're all stopped. Maybe I should yeah. not delete the jobs. That would be nice, right? That would be very nice. And you can't disable them here too. What's that? That's new. What's going on here? Let's see. Um, Why you can't disable the jobs? That's a new one. I'll just delete them. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, my friend. So let's look at the uh, success or running jobs, but there there was nothing running there, right? I don't I don't think there is anything running. Yeah. Nothing is going on here. We have no running jobs, so that should be fine but you can't really disable them. Okay, let me just close this. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna mount this one already. It's already mounted, so... Let's get rid of this one. Yes. That was re me troubleshooting with my friend, so... Now we have a lot of, uh, lot of plans. So we will we will do a first. We will not do a two-hour uh, Hyper-V Amigo showcast, but we will do multiple. So yeah. a lot of us. So planned. we've got a lot of plans. Uh, I wish we had as much time as we have plans. That would yeah, kind of help. <laughs> but you know, and we had to we had it. to play around with the new stuff. That's so exciting. So we got a little bit lost yeah. playing with technology, right? Uh, before, before upgrading, as yeah. always, uh, do read everything that's online about prerequisites. If you're on a very old SQL database, you might want to upgrade it. If you're running Veeam 1, you might want to upgrade it first, or you should upgrade it first. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
all that sort of stuff. It's documented, read it, make sure you're compliant. Don't try to upgrade from Veeam, Veeam 7 to Veeam 9.5 update 4, that won't work. Stuff like that, right? Uh, get, your, get your act together, clean up, and then you're good to go. Uh, so let's click this big button here. Let's see, let's see what it says. Normally, if anything is wrong, it will tell you and you can fix it. And I cross my thumbs. So, because we didn't try to update this environment, we, we did a dry run on another environment, but uh, I, I did four now in total two in production and two in the lab. And we did it uh, uh, here yeah. like you should do it first update production, then the test environment, right? <laughs> No, you only do that if you're a consultant. Yes, of course. <laughs> so uh, the update of our production environment went well. And there we could That's disable right. the jobs. That was quite interesting in the moment. Yeah, well, it's, so a, it's, a, it's just a, it's cosmic radiation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, we will kick off the update, so that will take a little bit, and then we get, will get, uh, go through the new features, I I think, right? Because there is a lot in Update 4, and uh, um, well, all this great cloud stuff, object storage and so on. I'm very excited about that. Oh, there there we are. There we go. Of course, you, you read all this yeah? very carefully. We have yeah, done it twice it. already, so we can go Twice, just to make sure you don't miss anything. <laughs> then you, of course, uh, accept both of them yeah because that that would be nice you can you can uh, view it if you want but let's just skip it it's going to tell you what it finds what version it finds and it's going to say look i'm going to i'm going to update what i all these components here so you have yeah. a backup catalog the server the console is also installed on the server so they're going to be upgraded so let's click next now you can add the new license file if you want to but you don't need to you have a violet license already installed on the machine, so we'll just forgo this. So there we go. It's still going good. So actually I, I have to share this. Veeam is the backup product where every upgrade I've ever done succeeded which is like phenomenal because the, the pro, some of the products I used before, it was always a mess and I always had to involve support. So yeah. for me, that was a huge improvement with Veeam. So local system, I, I, uh, I assume yeah. the recommended, yeah. Just checking if you do special things. As you can see, uh, Karsten has already a database. Uh, you should be on at least 2008. Uh, and this is the case in, in this situation. If you're not, you should upgrade it first just so you know, uh, service account, well, you're good. Yeah, that's, let's take that. Oh, by the way, if you do want to, okay, it finds the database, it informs you it will do an automatic upgrade of the database because that's necessary. And you are kind of required to agree with that, which makes sense. Then you can choose uh, to update remote components of your backup repository, of your protected servers, all, all, all let's say, all the servers that mm -hmm. make, uh, that compose your Veeam environment. We choose not to do that because- yeah, we, will, uh, we will postpone that and we will show it in the video, yeah, right? Because we want you to see it. And if yeah. you are a bit slow, like I am getting older, slower. Yes. Right? So then by, by the time I open my new console, Veeam might already have upgraded all those components on the remote servers, and then there's nothing left for you to see. So we won't click this. So, it, so it's going to stop the services, it's going to start installing, deleting, upgrading, uh, and it's basically a case of if you're very bored at work, you can watch this, or you can just uh, wait for our video, play it in uh, five times the speed, <laughs> and uh, go for a cup of coffee or go do something useful whilst you're at work, yeah. right? Uh, so, uh, you should first, also know. Yeah? Everything is locked. Everything is locked. So if something goes wrong and you haven't seen it on the screen, you're kind of covered. Mm -hmm. So I I want to uh, do a little bit of a shout out for the software we are using here, the the remote desktop software Royal TS. It's not a hamburger from a, from McDonald's. Uh, it has the same name, but I like the software a lot. It's from another MVP of uh, that is living in Austria um, and 
you can do all your connections here, your credentials. It has a server part if you want to, if you're working with multiple people. Um, I like it really and use it on a daily basis. So um, yeah. just wanted to do that. Free, yeah, There's a free license, a free, right? It has a free free edition as well, up to 10 VMs, I think, or 10, 10 instances and or yeah. and connection stuff like that. But it's, it's a really nice one. Uh, it's uh, probably the best out there. Yeah. I, I like it a lot. And uh, as an MVP, you get a free license um, for all the good stuff, but it's also not very expensive. I looked it up and I, I, I think for a single user, it's around 30 to 40 euros, so 30 to 40 yeah, dollars. And for a good software, that shouldn't be really a problem. At least I, I yeah. think that way. Yeah. Okay. I, I, yeah. Okay, so it's it's kicked off. So while it's working, you can you can follow along if you like to. You can also see if something goes wrong. But so let's we, discuss about what's new, right? Yeah, we move it a little bit to the side so that we see it, and then we can open a PDF. Yeah. To, that helps us to give you an a glimpse yeah. of what's new in uh, Veeam backup and replication. I will I will increase it a little bit. I said I will increase it a little bit, so it's a PDF, and it doesn't increase. Very nice. <laughs> okay, I love it. There are other ways. Wait. Sorry for the Ooh. German. So, uh, Didier, uh, the first big one is native oh. object storage support yeah. with Veeam. Yeah. 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 So basically, this is uh, the first time that you can actually uh, create a bottomless storage for your uh, capacity tier or, or use it as a capacity tier. And it's integrated in the, the scale out uh, uh, rep uh, repository, right? Yeah. The, so server, with, the scale out backup repository. So with bottomless, you mean uh, it's endless, like if you, if you use uh, storage in uh, AWS S3 is supported, Amazon S3, uh, Azure Blob Storage is supported. I also read IBM Cloud Object Storage as as well as num numerous S3 compatible services. And we will talk about that uh, in one of the next uh, videos, I assume. Um, so bottomless means you have endless storage there, or nearly endless, right? Well, well let's put let's let's put you have as much storage as you have money, I guess. Okay, that's uh, <laughs> that's a limiting factor, there, right? Basically, there's always a limiting factor. Of course, with the hyperscalers, you're supposed to be able to buy storage, and they should be able to provision it as fast as you can consume it. So, in theory, in theory at least, this is bottomless. But in practice, you will be limited by financial constraints because even if it looks like a great idea to fill 70 zettabytes or something in in in, in the cloud you might not want to pay for it and if you need zettabytes there is maybe a bottom that you reach and that is not money there's maybe not enough uh, storage in the area where you consume it right so even yeah, the even the hyperscaler are not un, unlimited. So they have to buy new well, data. They have to build new data centers. Sorry. Well, it, well, it's not it's not magic. I guess it's supply chain management in in in, in an end. Well, they, they they have statistics about growth, consumption, uh, decommission of of resources, and I guess they try to predict as well as possible what they will need, and they they have to get a budget, and they, it has to be in the pipeline somewhere. So they're still human beings. They're not gods. So yeah. they they. But from from a standpoint, from you as a consumer, you should not worry about it. Let's put it that way. Okay, so um, we can integrate now um, cloud object storage into uh, our Veeam backup and replication scenario. We have tested that, and as you mentioned, yep. it's a part of the scale out uh, uh, backup repository. Um, yes. And uh, you have your latest backup on premises in your uh, in your uh, local uh, backup repository. And then you can scale out and uh, specify, for example, if the data that is so many days old or if, if your uh, space is uh, reaching the limit, then scale out to the cloud, right? That's yeah, the idea. Which right? have a Whichever comes first, I guess, right? If you, uh, but normally the idea is that for just for pure operational and performance reasons, you'll want to back up to a local local storage mm -hmm. because of speed, but not not just speed of backup, but also speed of recovery. 
right? That's uh, very, what, very true, yeah. Uh, very important. Yeah. So, so it's there, local. But of course, uh, if you want to have very fast storage for both recovery and uh, backups themselves, uh, it might get a bit more expensive. So what you could do is, let's say, invest in that, still save some money and take the rest of the, the backups to the capacity tier in the cloud where storage is as cheap as it as it should get mm -hmm. and we can discuss that but it it comes down to the fact that look what what do you need on what 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 are your needs for backups and recovery on premises uh, is it seven days is it 14 days you size your performance tier for that you give it a little margin and then you say look anything after x amount of days or when my uh, store my free space drops below a certain percentage i want to offload it but it starts working on that yeah so you might want to change the way you design backups uh around that new capability Right. Yeah, so there is there is another um, thing that is important today. Uh, that is, um, you have this software that is doing crazy things with your data, the uh, ransomware. Oh yeah. yeah. So oh, yes, um, free encryption. <laughs> free encryption, right? Not free decryption, but free encryption, right? So it's, it's um, a free encryption as a service, yes. Yeah. So what do you think, Didier, about using something like object object storage to Get this gap between your your local data and you um, and uh, maybe said off host data or having another storage for your backup that is not reachable for wow. these uh, encryption software. Well, well, yes, yes and no. I think it can be a part of it, uh, depending on how how often you create a full synthetic or an active full or or, or anything like that, because you have to remember. If it can encrypt the the storage locally, mm -hmm. and it offloads it to the cloud, to blo to object storage, what you are offloading is already encrypted by the bad guys. So then it can't help you. Yeah, but I, you I don't think it worked that way, oh, did you? It, it will encrypt your uh, your backup files, like the how they call VB VBM files and and yeah. all the stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah. if it's encrypted, yeah. maybe your uh, backup and replication can't read them anymore. Oh? You would sure. recognize that they are encrypted. Well, uh, you would. Yeah. Hopefully, as, as quickly as possible, but by then it might be too late. Okay. Right? Yeah, but I so, I think backup and replication will only uh, copy the blocks that are not encrypted that it can understand. Hopefully, to this off offload storage or uh, cloud storage. Let's let's hope so. In any way, it's not a it's, it's in any way it's not a file share. So yeah. what's already in the cloud might help you recover from yeah. an incident where what's still on premises has been encrypted. Yeah. But of course, once it has been encrypted, whether whether it recognizes it immediately or not, uh, it's unusable on premise. And even if it would get to the cloud, it would be unusable there as well because the and damage has been done. That's true. So that's a bit like. So this is this would be like an air gap. I, I heard air gap or uh, in in some discussions about the right. protecting against malware. Um, so or ransomware. The with, yeah. Yeah. The problem with air gapping is always uh, what what is really an air gap. Yeah. And then you always come into the discussion of tape, and then some people will say, well, only physical tape because physical tape is something that is removed. Well, that's also not always true because some tape robots are never emptied. It's, it, uh, the tapes That's remain true. in the tape robot. Uh, depends on the process, I guess. Uh, yeah. Then you have the VTLs, the virtual tape libraries. You can put them in front of your cloud storage, whether that's on, on another data center or a commercial player. Uh, the, the trick is, I think the most important thing is that uh, if the backup is easily reachable, via your normal environment, mm -hmm. whether that's a file share, administrative shares or whatever, or even hijacking a server, a VM, and gaining access to the, the data repository. If you have an extra repository somewhere else that is based on a different technology, I think that is your best bet on protecting yourself. Yeah. Because if you look at, 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 at some of the ransomware uh, <laughs> cases we've seen is that uh, people have actually hijacked uh, the VM where the backup software is running. Yeah. And the the ransomware did not just 
you know, encrypt the backup files, they actually deleted the, the backup files. Uh, if they can do the same to your SAN, if you think your SAN is the, is, is the single line, last line of defense, the moment I have access to the console, which manages the SAN snapshots, which are normally not exposed to any server by default, of course, they're not mounted to just, they exist in the SAN, but the moment I have the access to the, to the SAN console and I have the credentials, I can start deleting whatever I want. That's true. So it depends. It depends a bit if it if it's a, let's say a one of the mill, not too complicated ransomware attack. You might be okay with just you know having enough a, a copy somewhere else. Uh, the three to one rule, so to speak. But yeah. if you have a more more elaborate attack where they really do their homework and they investigate your environment a long time before they hit you. They're probably going to go after your sand snapshots. They're going to go after your backups, yeah. uh, copies. They're going to go after everything you've got, and and they and they and they'll know your environment. Yeah, and yeah, that's true. Idea. If you if you have a really really attack that is targeting you by humans, I think yeah. the the chances are slight that you uh, can use those things to protect yourself. But for the typical software that you get maybe over a mail or so, that maybe helps. So it always depends at your side. So our our yeah. update is through, and we didn't really talk about the other stuff. So how oh. how should we go on? Uh, uh, just talk like about finish, the other perhaps? features, or just yeah, yeah, just 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 talk about the other features. Just click finish. You have to and restart. We have to anyway, restart, so. but it's a virtual yeah. machine. That's not doesn't take too long. Yeah. So well, let's 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 continue with the discussion about the the, the object storage. So the good the good thing is once you've set it up, and we'll hope to show you that in a in a in a uh, follow up video, is it's transparent. So you don't really have to manage it or babysit it. It will just happen for you. Mm -hmm. uh, so it should be space efficient because well you you'll you'll use whatever you do on the source side of compression. You'll you won't have to do duplication or anything else it's it's all taken care of for you in a forever incremental way uh, is that a good thing is that a bad thing well it it all depends you don't you don't want to have uh, a ridiculous amount of full backups or let's say you always have to drag over to the cloud mm -hmm. so you'll you'll have to you'll have to decide a bit on uh, on your strategy over there but let's let's put it this way it it tries to optimize it as as as, as good as possible Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so so um, the feature is included. That's important in the enterprise edition. So it's not in the standard version of uh, backup and replication. It's in the enterprise, but it's not in the enterprise. Uh, it's also in the enterprise plus. But you don't need the enterprise plus edition for that, right? Yeah. But the plus is, I think, if I if I have it correctly, is the extra application integration, right? So yeah, and maybe uh, with uh, with this console where you have the self service, and so on, self service backup and so on. But I'm not so sure. I'm not a licensed specialist. Yeah. So um, then we have some more um, new stuff here: expanded restore options to AWS and Azure Stack with Veeam Cloud Mobility. So what, what's, gra what's grabbing me here is Azure Stack. As far as uh, you know, um, I'm also in, invested in Azure Stack. We discuss a lot about Azure Stack, uh, but I'm happy that we can restore now to Azure Stack. So, uh, um, and we will maybe also try to use blob storage in Azure Stack. We, we are not, we're not sure that it will work. Yeah. So also, it should, it should yes, it should. Uh, unless um, uh, Veeam uses maybe the newest API of the blob storage that is not available yet in Azure, Azure Stack, but I I don't think so. So we will we will well, uh, it, look at that. It's 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 in there as an option. So I I'm, I'm guessing they they calculated for that one. They're yeah. not gonna do that. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, I, we hope we will have a look at the Azure Stack restore. Um, but it's but. It's, yeah, but it's kind of fun that you can restore to different clouds. Right? Yeah, AWS and Azure Stack, and also to Azure. Yeah. But that that was in the product already, right? Restore to Azure. Yeah, but 
Yeah, but but it, but it's but if you think about it, it's quite it's quite a feat because converting a virtual machine from one environment to another, you could say, look, I'm on Hyper-V, I have this virtual machine, I want to I want to restore it to Azure Stack. Hey, that's also also Hyper-V, but you know, you might have a generation two UFI yeah. Hyper-V machine, and in Azure, well, generation two is coming, but it's not, you know, it's coming forever thing. now, right? Yeah. Even in uh, Amazon, look here. In Amazon, uh, you also have uh, uh, you have to do a conversion to a bi to BIOS. Ah, uh, yeah, they still have BIOS. Yeah, I think that's that's the law of how do you how, how do you call it? And we have a very nice term in in Dutch for that. But uh, you know, when you're the first to do something, you get you get an advantage, but you also <laughs> have a little bit of a disadvantage because you'll be the first who has to deal with the legacy stuff. Yeah, true. And, and Amazon, and Amazon was the first, so it's on BIOS, so now they have to move from that to UFI. But yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's uh, it 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 slows them down a bit because they were the first. And okay. I don't know the real the real ni nice comparison for that in, in English. But is our machine back up? Yeah, it is. Yep. I'm just logging in. So let's let's start the Veeam backup and replication. So let's uh, let's go on with the features while the backup and replication locks in. Improved security and compliance with Veeam Data Labs. Idi, was yeah. it? What is that? Well, uh, the idea is that uh, in, in in it's big in Europe, but of course, if you do business around the world, you are impacted as well. Uh, the idea is that you you have to have a process in place or at least I hope you have a process in place uh, to delete data on demand uh, where appropriate and mandated by uh, you know, GDPR. And maybe you want to first kick off the, the, the component updates while we no, talk? First, or first let's talk about okay. that and we yeah. do, then we do the component updates. So let's let's say you have an entire process running to on your on your customer database or your or your production database of uh, where you, where you store personal data and some people say look I don't want to be known in that system anymore I want that that data taken out and it's all legally okay well you run the scripts and the data is removed on well, the week after you get a request to restore the date the database and guess what it's all back in there. So the idea is that in the Azure, uh, in the Veeam Data Labs, you can actually uh, access your database, run the same process, remove the data again, and then restore it, so that you don't restore uh, a bad situation into the production environment again. So you can use this both for regulation, reg regulatory purposes like G GDPR data that needs to be removed, mm -hmm. or but you could also do it for for malware. Let's say you have a a machine where uh, you need to restore the data, but you want to check first, hey, is this machine okay? Yeah. Maybe you need to restore a machine from a, from a less trusted source or less trusted location. You might want to have a peek inside and scan it with antivirus to see is anything uh, going wrong uh, with that, mm -hmm. which makes it kind of a, a, funny, a funny thing to say because uh, Veeam now integrates by default in the box with a couple of uh, antivirus uh, Vendors, yes. so to speak, or solutions. There are, there are three solutions I read. So the Microsoft Windows Defender, then we have Symantec mm -hmm. Protection Engine, and oh, it's I don't know how it's pronounced. It's ESET not not 32. So they are yeah. out of the box. Yeah. And uh, we learned at the Veeam Vanguard meeting, you also can integrate other uh, antivirus solutions or anti-malware solutions. I guess, I guess as long as it's automatable, you can script it into the solution, right? So, uh, but it, but it's, but it's kind of cool, especially now. Uh, maybe you've seen the trend at your customers, but it's kind of scary sometimes. Uh, the ransomware comes in and it can remain dormant for a while, so mm -hmm. two weeks, three weeks, then it kicks in. So if you, norm, you know what happens when you have a malware attack, right? You detect it. Hopefully, as soon as possible, you yank out the cable of everything that's very important, either virtually or physically. Doesn't really matter, yeah. but uh, you stop it. That cold in its tracks as hard and as fast as you can. You, you're not a popular guy at that moment, but you are. You are really being. You're doing what's necessary for the for the security of the company, but you're not popular because you're a bit 
in a, in overdrive at that moment. But then, of course, you you estimate and establish what the damage is, and you start your recovery. Now, it would be kind of bad if you do a recovery and you actually recover to a situation where the ransomware you just killed dead in its tracks and removed is restored yeah. because it's a dormant variant. So to help you deal with all that sort of uh, situations, the uh, the capabilities of the of the product are becoming, let's say, richer. Now, unfortunately, this is not uh, a magic wand. So it's not because you bought Theme that everything is going to be done for you. Yeah. But you have but you have the tools to integrate into your process of dealing with those incidents. That's right? true. But it's not it's but it's not just click. And somehow Veeam will know there is malware in there and take it out for you, and you will never know. It's not that transparent, but at least you have the tooling available, either whether it's for GDPR regulations or for ransomware or for malware. You've got you've got you've got the tools to work with. Let's put it that way, and that's uh, that's a good one. Okay. Anything that anything they can do to make your life easier and faster when you have to do it is a good thing. So, but you should try it somehow and uh, not have to use it the first time uh, when you have this attack and you yanked out everything and everybody is crying, I want to work, I want to work, uh, when can we work again? Uh, and then you start to set it up and so on, right? In, in that respect, it is a lot like a restore. If the first time you ever do a restore is when the, the mission critical database server is gone, it's yeah. not going to be a happy... Yeah. It's it's always stressful. Yeah, but right? yeah that's... It's never going to be... That's such, a, that's a nice uh, thing to say, the mission-critical database, because the next part is about databases or mission-critical criti enterprise applications. But we, before we talk about that, we will kick off this one, right? Okay. So these are the, the Hyper-V hosts and the backup repositories that we're using. And, of course, all those Veeam components in there, they need to be updated and yeah. that's what's going to happen now. This is what we said, don't do it automatically because we wanted to show you. Yeah, and I'm missing something here. Do you see the Dell servers? We have the Dell servers at, as a backup target. What's that? Didn't you delete them? Or... Hard drive on this computer. So, um, no, I didn't Somebody's delete. Acting. I didn't delete them. Uh, we will have a look later. So we have our backup uh, backup server. Then we have uh, a, a three-node uh, storage spaces direct cluster that we backup. The fourth node yeah. is one of our backup targets, and we have yeah, another four-node S2D cluster as a source. And I think this is uh, this is a virtual machine where we have installed the um, the agent. The, no, the, the yeah the the backup yeah. agent, the server. Yeah. For Windows, yeah, okay. Yeah, for yeah. Windows. So let's apply this, right? Yep. And we see that now here, and we can go back to our window. We, we will see here the backup running. It's very nice. It's very fast. And maybe we have to reboot some servers. Well, I, I normally have to reboot my uh, backup repositories. That's that would be Tarox S2D4, right? Yeah. I'm okay. not saying you won't have to reboot something else, but my backup repositories are normally the ones that need a kick. Yeah. We will do that. So the next the next new uh, new feature is enterprise application plugins, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, everybody will be happy now that uh, Veeam has a plugin for SAP HANA. Um, Especially if you have SAP HANA. Yeah, it, yeah, and it's uh, it's very important, at least in the future. Um, HANA is the only database I heard that is supported with SAP after 2025. 20, so in six years, we everybody will have HANA. No SQL Server with SAP, no Oracle with SAP. So it's maybe a good time to start thinking about that. And a good thing is back, uh, Veeam can now back up those databases, right? Yeah. And the next one is, Hello. you know, this Oracle. software, Oracle. Yeah. Have yeah, you heard yeah, of it? Yeah. Absolutely, I have. I've seen it quite a lot as well. I think you have it still in your work environment, right? Uh, not really. We 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 use, let's say, solutions built against it as a as a commodity service, and let's uh, let's leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
So if you have an or Oracle, Oracle Armen, that's I think the the backup. Uh, or I, as I recall, I have my Oracle experience are years back, really years back. I I, I used to develop an H HTTP application in Oracle. I think 20 years ago, something like okay. that, or even yeah, 20 years ago. That's right. So I haven't. I haven't done much with Oracle since then, but I know Armin is something for backup, right? The Armin manager. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. So we have now an integration in that, but for that you need the Enterprise Plus Edition. But if you have well, those, that's those software, that's you can yeah, afford you have... the Enterprise Plus Edition, right? And that's also the environment where you probably will need them. Yeah. I mean, not. I'm not. To be honest, if you're if you're a small and medium enterprise and you're not on SAP or Oracle, you might not want to go there, or you have no need for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, different environments have different needs, different cultures, different histories. But it, it's it's in the large enterprises where this is where this is the most needed. So it, it sort of makes sense, right? Yeah. I know it. I know there's this this there's this tendency to want it all, even if you never use it. You know, it's I call it hoarding features, but you have to be a bit realistic. Uh, I, w I will never weep for not having Oracle Arman or SAP HANA if I don't have SAP HANA or Oracle Arman. I can complain about that all day, and it costs a lot of money to have it. But if I don't need it, yeah, I was. Quite and as happy. you said, as you said, if you have those you probably have the budget to protect them. Well, at least I hope you do, because otherwise you have a, a priority misalignment yeah. somewhere. So I, 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 I would never admit that in the past, but now I'm, I'm getting older and I'm getting rid of stuff I really don't need. And I'm, I, I hope I'm not hoarding anymore. And Didier and I, we had some discussions in advance to this uh, thing uh, uh, that I tried to simplify some things like my, my wife wants to. So. Uh, I will never have SAP HANA or Oracle in my environment. But let's have a look here. It seems going well before we talk about the next features. So the okay. Tarox are already updated. No, this is, yeah, the, the green check is, yep. uh, they are done. No reboot yeah, and, here. So and no reboot, that's good, that's yeah. good. And the others are still going on, so. Yeah, but you'll you'll be there quickly, you know. Yeah, it looks, will, it looks Let's good. talk about the next feature. We we, we can uh, we can shortly talk about it because it's not really a feature for Hyper-V, right? Enhanced ah, self-service capability. Yeah. Is it? Well, I guess I, I guess I guess in some environments this could be very useful if you if you have business units where people need to be able to restore their own VM or their own data for some reason. Yeah. Uh, that will help. Uh, in my experience, most most of my environments, I tend to be, have to go the other route. Uh, even with end user consumer devices, they want babysitting, hand holding all the way. So this is for me. This is never a, a super big deal. But I know environments where, where 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 you have the people that are quite capable of handling this themselves, and then they can. Yeah. Uh, let's say move ahead faster because they don't have to go to a service desk or come to to, to come to IT. Uh, it all it all helps, but yeah. as you said, because it's uh, it's integrated as far as I know with uh, with, with VMware. Yeah, at least uh, the new features. Um, it seems mostly for VMware, VMware Tech. So the enterprise manager is uh, is an HTML-based self-service portal for the users, so they can mm -hmm. kick off a restore or a backup of. Uh, of VMs and uh, there are some enhancements there. Huh? Yeah. So, but the most yeah. that is talked about is vSphere privileges. Uh, that that what I what I meant or vSphere tags that I meant. That's not really for Hyper-V. Oh. So the enhancements yeah. here, as far as I know, are not really for Hyper-V. They are for uh, uh, vSphere environments. So, yeah. so let's talk about the next thing: intelligent. Diagnostics. That sounds really fancy, right? Yeah, and and, and 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 it sort of follows the trend of machine learning, yeah, uh, data mining, business intelligence, whatever you want to call it. I call it statistic analysis, basically. Uh, but it all it all comes together to the fact that uh, when your systems are able to scan through logs and diagnose for themselves what's wrong. They 
could one alert you to what is wrong they might give you a hint how to fix it or potentially even fix it uh, themselves for you so it's always nice to see these trends uh, and I'm always very eager to see how it works out in real life yeah. now the thing you have to realize perhaps over here and this this is an idea I just have in my head is that uh, maybe this is less important to you than it is to the to the vendor because if let's say if Veeam or Microsoft have intelligent diagnostics and by having that they can reduce their internal workload by 30% I'm just putting a number out there or 50% take whatever you want as yeah. an example that is significant for them yeah you 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 might you might still call them three times per year and you say it hasn't reduced my the times I had to call them but maybe without it you would have had to call them 10 times That's because true. the product becomes bigger and more complex so uh, it's not because you don't directly see the benefit that the benefit isn't there and that it isn't working so I'll, I'll be I'll be I'll be happy if I hear any shared information about that through the Vanguard program about how much it has helped mm. them uh, in dealing with issues yeah. Yeah. and as far as I see you need uh, uh, v it's mostly dependent on Vmon uh, update four, so uh, we don't cover that here. So if you have Veeam on uh, also uh, in, with Veeam backup and replication, this will maybe improve your environment. So let's have yeah, a look sure, here. Because it, basically, you get the tools they have, right? Yeah. So let's go back to the last part of the uh, new features. Uh, there is new platform support. I'm very happy that it's now supporting officially Windows Server 2019. My friend Didier has experience with um, Veeam Backup and Replication, I think uh, 9.53a running on uh, Windows Server 2019 already, but it was not supported, right? And you are backup and backupping the stuff that, too. That was lab only. Uh, I was just trying to figure out if anything had changed in the backup uh, in Windows Server 2019 when it came to Hyper-V and stuff like that. So, but that, well, that was pure, purely experimental. The only thing I can say is that since we have Veeam uh, officially G8, uh, one environment is at 85% 2019, uh, one other environment is at 33 uh so for, basically for me this is the, the 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 brakes have come off right i i can go ahead full speed in some environments mm -hmm. where i can bring them all as uh I, I can update the entire infrastructure domain controllers uh rds the 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 nps servers the radio servers the, the certificate servers everything dhcp you name it, whatever is infrastructure, I can upgrade them. And then in some environments where we we control the stack and the applications, we can also start doing it over there. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. Yeah, so it's important so, to see the client is also supported, the newest version of Windows 10 uh, we have, and that's important. Uh, uh, I think we have support for the free Hyper-V server 2019. Uh, I, yeah, I know have, some yeah. environments where they really use the Hyper-V server. It's a free offering. You get clustering, you get Hyper-V with mm -hmm. most of the capabilities, not all of them, because some are dependent on the data center edition nowadays in Windows Server, like Storage Spaces Direct, for example. So you can't mm -hmm. create a hyper-converged uh, Storage Spaces Direct cluster with the free Hyper-V server, but the other stuff works. Then we have support for Active Directory 2019, Exchange 2019, and SharePoint 2019. And uh, I would say they are still important products for on-premises. Not everybody uses Office 365, right, DJ? Uh Not everybody, but of course, uh, the, the other one that's very important in there is uh, Microsoft Active Directory. That is still very much uh, predominant. Uh, I, I have, I have, unless you're a very new company that has no legacy at all, I think most still tend to use Active Directory, at least and, in my experience. And in, in the Azure Active Directory, you still, if you mean uh, uh, instead of using Active Directory, Azure Active Directory for Microsoft, you, you still have computer contests there. So if you have some legacy stuff, and I assume 100% of the companies that are longer out there as two years still have Active Directory, yeah. What now, of course, of course, if you look at most Active Directory deployments, I, I'm I'm 
think it's pretty much safe to say that not not very many will be on 2019. No. But that's not the way how to think about it. The way you have to think about it is that your backup vendor is not the one blocking you from moving forward. That's true. That's all. That's always the most important thing. People sometimes ask me, "Oh, DJ, why do you want support for for the newest version of all those things?" It's like, it's not because I need them all updated tomorrow. But if I get the chance in our environments, we will do so because that's taken care of as an operational issue. Mm -hmm. And when somebody comes and says, oh, we want to do X, but to do that, we have to take care of A, B, C, and D. I'm like, I'm good. Mm -hmm. that's My important. Active Directory is where it needs to be. This is where it needs to be. This already has been updated. I'm never the blocker, but to be able to do that, to be able to make sure that my environment is always up to date and won't block any initiatives in hybrid cloud, in public cloud or whatever, uh, I have to have parties, partners, third party vendors, like a, a backup software vendor that allows me to move forward. Because if my backup vendor says, hey, yeah, look, I'm gonna support Active Directory 2019 or ADFS 2019, you know, or, or Windows Server 2019, and I need it for some reason, and I have to wait 18 months, I'm not a happy camper. That's true, yeah. So for me, for, for me, having this support quickly doesn't mean you have to update tomorrow. It does mean that when you want to update or need to update, you can. Otherwise, your backup software becomes a blocker. And for me, that, that's the most important thing. Always make sure you serve your customers with the latest of the greatest so they can move ahead and you are never the cause of slowing them down or preventing okay. them to do something. Yes, that's absolutely true. So if you are on Oracle database, uh, I think this is the latest greatest that is supported. And uh, for the other guys, the VMware guys, also the latest and greatest is supported with update for. Um, there are some general remarks here. App aware processing, they have done something there with SQL transition logs and Oracle redo logs. Um, some improvements there with vSphere VM application aware processing, they did some things here and um, yeah, that's all about Oracle. And they also improved the engine. So a lot of you will be happy that they can now have VBK files uh, up to 120 terabytes, right, Didier? So you can do <laughs> humongous backups. <laughs> um, well, I, one I, I, petabyte I'm, I'm, of the total uh, backup file size, right? <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I think I think large maximums are important, not to push towards them or aim or strive to achieve yeah. them, but. Uh, I've heard or was asked to look at some environments in my lifetime where I think like, why are they putting 64 terabytes of data in one single VHDX? Yeah, that's yeah. And, and and then they want to do a volume level backup, and then <laughs> then then it helps that uh, you have these large, let's say, maximums. Yeah. Uh, funny things gets done and, and and you can't always control what happens and and sometimes you just have to roll with with whatever you you have at hand and then if the the, the capabilities of the tooling you're using uh, at least allow you or give you a fighting chance to 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 build around it the best possible data protection solution you can that's nice actually it's very nice because yeah. Uh, you know as well as I do, you walk into environments where you think like, oh, the backup isn't doing what it's supposed to do, it's too slow, or it's too this, or it's too that, and you look at the setup and you're like, okay, this was not designed with backup in mind. Yeah, that's right? true. And yeah. then you can say, okay, we need to change X, Y, and Z, and then you get as an answer, no way, not going to happen. And it's like, okay, what what's in the box, and what are the capabilities that I can still make this work somehow without having to change what they can't or won't change? Yeah, and that's true. <laughs> The more you have, the more options, right? Yeah. Uh, this one is maybe uh, also of of interest. So um, Veeam claims I, for small VMs, you have a fifth, up to a 50% faster backup time, right? I think and you have seen it, right? I think yeah. that might be true. Yeah, I, I have to look at the numbers yet, but my first impressions after upgrading on, I think it was the 23rd, I think I see this, yes. Yeah. They so are, there they is... Are fast. So I'm not really a Linus expert, but they have also improved some features in Linus. Uh, 
or Linux, uh, however you say it, and uh, for CentOS and so on. Um, and there are some improvements for Microsoft Azure, they, for the Azure CSP subscription and Azure Government Cloud. They are now supported. Um, ability to select network security groups for the target Azure IIS VM. So network security groups is the firewalling in Azure. You can now specify yeah. Azure Active Directory users when connecting to your Azure account. That's also nice. A little bit improvements for Hyper-V. So the Hyper-V VM groups, uh, we talked about that. That's a feature that is available with Windows, uh, with Hyper-V 2016. So you can we need do, to play. We yeah. need to play with that one and yeah, see what I, we can do with it. Yeah, I have to confess, I know about the feature. It's also the startup groups, right? But I've never used it, uh, never, never played it in the lab with it. So maybe nice. Uh, instant recovery of agent backups to a Hyper VVM now supports Windows 10 Hyper V as a target hypervisor. I think mm -hmm. that's a good one because if everything is gone your hypervisors and so on. You maybe want to restore your, for example, your Active Directory to your uh, to a laptop, for example, to get a to get a start with the Active Directory. So yeah. if you have a dependency yeah. of Active Directory, that could help, right? Yeah. ReFS, there yeah. are some improvements here for 2019 ReFS, and then we, of course, there are the VMware vSphere improvements. I don't have a clue about that. So they have to be important, but we are the Hyper-V amigos, right? <laughs> okay, we'll skip that one. RESTful APIs. Uh, yeah. Some some of the vanguards are doing really nice things with the with the with the APIs. For, yeah. So they will be happy about this added JSON yeah. support yeah. and added RESTful yeah. API coverage. Uh, setup so built-in build SQL build. Express is changed to Microsoft SQL Server 2016 SP1. Okay, a newer version. Yeah, final, finally, yeah. yeah. And then there is more, <laughs> so I don't know if we can talk about everything. Well, the, ag the agent management is, is quite interesting because I think the agent in, in version three is is probably where they where they should be at. This is this is this is this is the the addition that really drives it home for me, and yeah? it's because it's it, of course it has a feature I've been requesting very politely and very Which one? softly. Which one did uh, you? Multiple multiple backup jobs yeah i even, think I, even, I requested that too <laughs> even if you are not even if you are not integrated with uh, with the vbr console but the standalone works or workstation edition or server edition yeah. you can have multiple jobs now of course it's only in the paying edition so it's, in the free edition you still only have one job but the fact that you now have it and it's available it's something for me this uh, yeah this 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 it's it's a lot it's a lot more of a of a slick uh, user interface uh I, I'm I'm happy to have what I've requested for such a long time. Yeah. And so they 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 did a lot with the agents. Uh, they we are now at version three, and I love the agent. Uh, I I use it as for backup for my uh, for my main working machine. That's my notebook, yeah. a lot, and I love it. And uh, funny story, uh, I think nearly nine years ago or, or ten years ago, we 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 did a block on the Hyper V server, the E block where where I uh, did with PowerShell something where you can shut down a VM, export a VM, and just start it automatically. And then with the export, it's it's like a backup for poor people. Yeah. And uh, a colleague of mine, uh, Jan, updated it to 2012 to 2012 R2, and he even talked about it in 2016. But uh, we have so much people demanding uh, this script. We we not we still get comments on on these blog posts where they request features. And there then Jan said there is this free software from Weem. You don't have to pay a cent for it for the backup agent and it's it's doing change block tracking it's such a nice thing compression and everything you don't need that script anymore so but still yeah. people are want this script and um i think the free edition even if you if you back up a hypervisor it, it, it's it's great so why rely on a script yeah, if you have such nice free software. So um, I, I'll, I'll, I'm so happy with the agent. I'll, I'll share a story. I had, I had a couple of environments where, let's say, people were they used another backup software. Let's put it that way. Yeah. But they, they didn't want to align it for Active Directory. Um, 
So for many, many years, since, since Windows Server 2000 AD actually, I have been automating the built-in backup capabilities so they could use that. And I've used it at var various locations, so empty backup basically. Uh, I scripted around it, so it was automated, there were secondary copies, there was email notification, error logging, etc., etc., etc. Then at the moment that the Veeam agent became available, I just went to all of them and said, look, this is what we're going to use now. Yeah. And actually, this Saturday, in one of those environments, I upgraded them to version 3.0. My main workstation at home has a lot of RAM and NVMEs. It has 16 VMs. It is update. It is it is protected with Veeam Agent. Of course. Uh, it rocks. It is rock solid. It works very well. And uh, the same as you did your script. Even if my script was around anti backup, uh, I I told people I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. This is a waste of time. There is yeah. something way better out there that is very reliable, and this yeah. is it. And that's not a. That's not a. Yeah. The free agent is not a version to get uh, you sold on on the other stuff. Of course, there there are some features that are no, only in the paid version, but the free stuff is so great, and they have now the third version of it. So uh, well, talk, I don't talk, think talk, it will talk, disappear yeah. soon. It, I think it will be there, and it's it's how you it's proof how good the software is, and uh, they convince well, you well, with the software, yeah. Well, the, the nice thing is as well that Veeam doesn't hold you hostage, right? Yeah. Uh, if, if you look at the at the, the object uh, storage there with the, with the Sober, you, you, you will always be able to restore your data even if you don't have a valid license anymore. Yeah. You can read it. The free yeah. tools will be able to restore the data. That's true. So basically, yeah. uh, the, sa the same with, uh, with if, if you look at, at, at what they have now, the community edition, right? They, they had the community edition for Office 365. You now have the community edition for Veeam 1 for backup and replication, and you have the free agent. If you are a small shop. Yeah, that's all you need. You, mean, you, you get the standard edition features for 10 instances, uh, whether that's two to workstations and you know, you 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 can do so much. Yeah. And uh, you can even mix a paid edition with a with a free edition, right? You you could you could add you could add a a community edition of Veeam backup and replication to Veeam one or vice versa. I mean, you can you can uh, mix and match. So it's very easy to now start using it with a lot of the capabilities and see what it does for you and if it's good enough and you have to pay some money to to scale it to 20 instances or 30 instances why not mm. but i mean this this is huge uh and I'm, i think I'm, if, I'm with you, yeah. if you if you look at the landscape it's a very smart move because they have competitors which is good keeps them sharp and they are also moving in with offers and uh, uh, capabilities. Well, what if those same capabilities are now offered in that community edition? Uh, well, you have a competitive advantage. Yeah. Uh, so Didier, let's come back here to the what's new. I I think we will finish here because there's so much more stuff. But it's it's about the agent. Uh, it's about uh, the explorer. Uh, I I know that's important, but we don't have the time to talk about all these uh, points or do we i i think uh, prob prob probably not and and let's let's face it read, reading a pdf isn't perhaps the best use of our time yeah that's true and the time of our viewer so let's uh, if you are interested in all the new features in the sun integration what they have done and the use of interface enterprise manager there's a lot of information here and of course we are very uh, very fond of the agent maybe we do another Hyper-V Amigo showcast where we uh, look at the agent a bit, but maybe in the future. So come well, I, I, I would love to look at the agents, especially yeah. also for the backups of uh, clusters, so yeah. physical servers. Uh, you can do that. Uh, it works quite well. So uh, I think I think it's uh, I think it's a very smart move that Veeam also does physical uh, backups. No. Uh, people were, laugh were laughing at a given moment that <laughs> uh, why would they do that? Uh, but you know as well as I do that in real world, 
not everything is virtualized just as much as not everything is in the cloud already so yeah that's true so uh, we will uh, we will look at uh, some of the agent at least and the cloud integration in the next yeah. uh, hyper v amigo showcast and it will not take another half a year to do that we'll come but up do, do we... but now let's finish this uh, update okay. huh? Yeah, finish the update and go look in about. You you should see that your old license between brackets is still working. You didn't specify a new one. So if you go to about. Let's, uh, let's just find about. <laughs> uh, Am I help? blind? Uh, you can look at the license file. There it is. License, yeah, that, that's about. So you, you've upgraded. That's good. Yeah, and we see it with a new uh, color scheme, right? So it's yeah, now it's, dark it's a green. Dark darker green except for the icons but uh, if you go to the same menu you have a you have a license yeah, just click it go to license so there you should see what what edition you have and if this was the version that was supported and running on on update 3 or 3a you're still good with with 4 right yeah you can specify the new but otherwise you can still keep running okay uh, so how what do we do now to just check if the uh, the software is still working uh, maybe you, doing a little bit of a backup you want a backup of course you do so um did we have some backups here we have some jobs here so we have um this is when when we played around just before christmas you were visiting me in germany and we did a lot of weem weem stuff uh and we set it up um, a backup to different uh, data stores. Um, just wait. So um, we have here, in essence, we have a very fast um, single box with um, with uh, NVMEs, SSDs, and HDDs in it. And uh, yeah. um, we are backing up some nice machines here, right? So which one should we kick off? Well, okay. kick off, kick, kick off one of the data movers. Why not? Let's do this one. So, just an incremental, I would assume, or do, should we do a full yeah. active? No, no, just do an incremental. You should not be obliged to do a full because you upgraded. It should always just keep working. So let's just go here. So it will kick off the backup, and now it should should be faster because we have a lot of small machines there. At least it should start faster, right? <laughs> now we'll see what happens. Yeah, I hope something will happen. Now your backups were already rather fast, so yeah, they were. We we couldn't kill the the target, right? No, we could not. That's good. Uh, let's see. How many VMs are in there? Do you do you know by heart? No. There was one complete CSV, right, of, a, of an SSD cluster. Just I guess. have a look. Let's see. Edit. It was a complete CSV, but we don't yeah, see the VMs. Yeah, but it's it's in the successful ones or the failed ones of the past, perhaps of the last 24 hours. Did you make some? Probably. So. No, it's not in the last 24 hours. This one isn't. Okay. But never mind. It's going to enumerate them anyway. So you'll see quickly enough. So as uh, while we wait for the backup, so uh, you have already updated uh, your some environments to set three or so to uh, update four. How's your experience yep. so far? Any, any? Um... Flawless, flawless, flawless. I had one hick. I had one. The only two hiccups I saw was I had a copy job running, so I needed to make sure it wasn't running. So it complained to me when I kicked it off. And the other one failure I saw was actually not from 3A to 4, but from 4 RTM to GA. So there's an update available if you're running RTM because yeah. you were one of the partners or, or, or testing. There's an update to go from RTM to GA. And with that, I had one issue that it couldn't update my back, one of the backup repositories, but, but that was because uh, basically it, it was in the lab, hence it was RTM. Uh, the VM had gone into safe state because I ran out of space and I just needed to reboot it to make sure 
it was okay, and then the upgrade of that component worked as well. So those are the only two things I saw. And I'll, I'll repeat it. I've, I've had backup products where every single upgrade was a day-long disaster, ending in us having to ship the entire database to the support guys of the vendor and waiting until the next day before we got, could, uh, could proceed. And that happened every time, so we, we came to expect it. Mm. And then since we're using Veeam, this, and it still amazes me, because if you look at that list of changes, if you look at what's new, if you look at what they improved, uh, it's not a small update. And it just went flawlessly. It's seam seamless. It's, it's, it's a great experience. And, and sort of, it's what you want. And so, sometimes I think I'm spoiled. Yeah. So I, I, have a, I have a feature request. I want to move this over there and I can't do it. <laughs> because the yeah. names of the VM are so long, so we we can't see uh, everything. So it it has en enumerated for a time, and there are some uh, VMs in the backup that are not there anymore. So uh, I think that took him a while. Um, to explain that, uh, this Taurox cluster is an S2D cluster and hyperconverged one where I do a lot of uh, testing. And uh, there was VM fleet deployed with a different name. Here you see this is a typical VM fleet a name convention, VM dash, some grouping, and then uh, the host name and uh, a number for the VM. And now we and have a, yeah, a new VM fleet there where the group is webinar. And here it was HVA, Hyper V Amigos, right? <laughs> <laughs> one. So these are not there anymore, but there are other ones. So we have a lot yeah. of stuff here. Where do we see the number of VMs? Um, we don't really see it, right? It's a lot. Let's let's put it that way. <laughs> and uh, so these are rather small ones. I would say 25 gigabyte ones. Okay. okay. See that? But this is a big one. This is an Azure Stack Development Kit. Uh, in a VM, and we will talk about backing up so, this nice. Uh, so how much? So how much is that for people who never deployed to SDK? I would say it's. Give them an idea. I, I would it's say easily half a terabyte to 750 gigabytes. 750 gigabytes if you use uh, it with all the past services deployed, and uh, yeah, yeah. it's really nice to have that in a virtual machine. In a beefy virtual machine, you can have your. In essence, it's Azure in one VM. So we have the Azure portal and everything. That's nice. But, and we will talk about on... how we back up this as an example uh, for um, for an agent use, right? That's At least one example. of the for one of the first examples. So now it's backing up. I see here these are small VMs. Oh yeah, if if you see that it failed to inject the guest one time, every VM that's deployed via VM fleet is not the main joint, yeah. so the credentials won't work. But with this uh, nice feature of PowerShell Direct yeah, that was introduced, yeah. yeah, and Veeam Veeam picked that up, of course, as a as an ability to work around the fact that you might not be able to connect to your VM. Yeah, uh, and this is this is kind of neat. Uh, so they just fail over to PowerShell Direct and still uh, get the uh, application aware guest backups done. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of that's really cool. It's kind yeah. of cool. Because all the all they have only an internal network adapter and uh, our uh, our backup uh, server can't connect to to that machine over the network. So that's really nice to use uh, PowerShell Direct from the Hyper-V hosts. I I like it. Um, so okay, um, Didier, how do we proceed? We can wait a bit and see what's happening here, but it seems that the backup kicks in and uh, uh, the update. Went through. Well, well, let's let 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 them do it and let's have a look at your backup infrastructure because there is some interesting stuff here to be okay. seen. First, you have to close this, and uh, up there oh, it's yeah. 31 VMs. So uh, oh, 31 okay. VMs. Closes. Uh, the remote mouse has to come along with me. Yeah, okay. And, we, and by the way, we promised not to do a two-hour um, uh, showcast, so we are now at one hour and uh, <laughs> ten minutes. <laughs> okay. So, so let's wrap this up. Let's look at the backup uh, infrastructure. 
I just wanted to yeah. click here and tease you, right? The object storage. In the next in the next showcast, we will include object storage. We've played around yeah. with that uh, a bit, and that's very nice. And we even found a solution where you can set up your own object storage on premises if you want to. Um, so you don't have to pay the monthly fee for the storage you use, right, Didier? Uh, uh, yeah, and, and, and it's not Azure Stack. So, uh, and it's not Azure Stack. Can, that would be a bit can, expensive to, for an you, update. You can, you, you can use Azure Stack to have your, uh, let's say, uh, object storage, but yeah. there are other solutions out there for people that have different needs. Let's yeah. put it that way. I'm not saying that Azure Stack is not a good option, far from, but... Uh, I don't believe in one size fits all. Yeah. So let different me, people, different needs. Let me say uh, Azure Stack would be the complete op opposite uh, in, uh, that, that is intentioned by object storage. Object storage should be cheap. Azure Stack is not cheap, at least not as an object storage, right? Let's, let's put it that way. You, you would not buy Azure Stack just to use it as, yes, just to use it as a backup target. That's true. Yeah. Okay, we that, will... Just, <laughs> okay, we will show you that. Um, we will show you some other nice stuff, but so far I, I was surprised we don't have to reboot our um, our target because our target is 2019 already. Maybe that's because of that. So the Good. we have we have updated the data data on S2D4 that we use as a backup target, and yep. it didn't ask us to update it. Yep. yep. So that's good. So here. Backup is still preparing. Yeah. Yeah. We don't we don't copy data yet, but um, we go, will see go, that. Go look, yeah? go look at one. That's zero percent. Go look at one where where we're at. Initializing oh, you, storage. Yeah, you you already have the the checkpoints created, so it's it will be any time now. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna start kicking in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, maybe that's a good point to uh, wrap up the showcast so far. And I, I, I would say we can promise to deliver another one this month. So we are now in February. We intend to uh, if, shoot another one very soon. Yeah, otherwise, otherwise it's going to be hard to get more out if we don't start doing some more. <laughs> <laughs> That's true because we have our MVP summit and then you go on an extend holiday, right, my friend? Yes, 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 yes. I'm going to do. Uh, I'm gonna have to find me a sombrero somewhere. Hey, <laughs> that's true. Maybe we will show Didier with a sombrero in the future. Yeah. <laughs> and you have a smartphone now. You can make pictures of it and even a video, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I'll, I, if I find a sombrero and a poncho, <laughs> I will most certainly make sure that the Hyper V Hyper V Amigos got a shout out. Right? That's very cool. Okay, and, Didier. And if you're, and, and we'll fix any Hyper-V problem and Veeam problem we come across in that part of the country. That's true. That's be... Okay, let's, let's say goodbye because we don't want to wait here and uh, look at the screen and uh, see how the data is moved. Huh? Maybe we can show yeah, that. In a... Oh, now it's starting. I'm just saying we don't want to wait <laughs> and now we see something happening. <laughs> it's already done. 99%, right? I mean, it's, uh, it's got to be. 99%, 99%, yeah, there, there we go. It's incremental, uh, nothing much has changed. So. Yeah, that's cool. yeah, that's really true. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, bye-bye, Carsten. Take care. Bye-bye, Didier. Yeah. See you soon.